All right, so today, as you can see, we're looking at an AR-15 speed loader. Looks like Edgar Tech Services uploaded this on June 22nd, 2020. Um, not many comments. Looks like there's five. He says it's still a work in progress. Oh, besides the, the part that holds the ammo itself that clips on over your magazine, it's also the plunger, of course. Um, I've already printed these. I'll come back to this here in a moment. There's a couple of issues I ran into. Nothing big. I mean, it's definitely usable. But in his notes, he said he printed on a CRS-10 Pro. Um, said he did it with 20% infill. But then his notes said he printed it at 100% infill. Well, on the magazine clip part, I guess. <laughs> um, overkill. 100% is by no means needed. I actually printed both parts at 35%. Even that's a bit much. You probably could get by with 25% on both parts. Now, on the plunger, if you wanted to, um, definitely you can uh, uh, kick that up if you wanted to. Um, like I said, 35 is way more than you need. And then he said imp uh, supports only on the magazine clip. I'll kind of come back to that in a moment as well. Um, but looking at this part, right up here at the top, I'm not sure why he made an indentation on both sides. All four corners on both sides are sharp. This edge here and this edge are sharp. I mean, they're like razors. So I'll be taking them down with a file here when I get done. Um, let's go ahead and switch back over to the camera live view. So this is what I'm talking about. It's this edge here, this edge, all four of these points. They are sharp. I mean, sharp like you, you'll cut yourself on them if you print it as is. Um, I didn't realize that at first. I should have looked a little closer. Um, like I said, I did it at 35%. I think it's solid. I did this one 35%. It's solid. <laughs> um, printed okay. Um, I did have a little cleanup here. I mean, it looks good now, but I had a little bit of stringing here. That could be just my printer. I have a new uh, Creality CR6 SE. And then you can see up here in these slots, um, it's kind of, eh, again, that might be my printer. But you can see looking down it, uh, there's a little bit of stringing in there. Make sure there's more than I thought. I thought I'd clean that out, actually. It's just right here at the top. Now, the thing I was worried about, but I went ahead and printed it just as was. Just wanted to see if it worked. And it did. But I was worried about this actually fitting in here and sliding. And yes, I put it in the wrong way. But it slides, as you can see, very well. And if you put it in the correct... Oh, that was the right way. This is the backwards way. Put it in this way. It slides in quite well. No problems. So, an AR-15 magazine. Has a little clip slot here. That's what this clips onto and holds to it. Shove that on. As you can see, it fits. Fits quite well. All right. And we got the slot here. Let's go ahead and throw some bullets in there. Just going to do one to start with. I don't know if you can see that. Getting to roll back out. So you can see he's here. Put him back in. And then put this in the correct way. Shove him in. And, oh, he fell back out as you just saw. That was interesting. Actually, it was working quite well earlier. Do that again. I think what's happening is it's not quite long enough. This plunger, I think, needs to be just a hair longer. All right. 
Nope, one came out. So let's take this off. One second. Ooh. That's not good. What happened there? I'm sticking my finger in there, let me tell you. All right, well, as you can see, it uh, jammed them. That's, that's not good. That's live ammo. Well, yeah, I can pull the plate off and release the spring, but shit. It didn't do that earlier. Drop these two in there. Just want to see what's what's happening. Put this in. I think what may have happened. One of those bullets may have. Oh, yeah. See now I broke it. Well, oh, damn it! I was all excited about this. I think what happened is one of the bullets was standing on end, and it jammed it. That's that's not acceptable. So let's see if we can clear this without hurting anybody. Yeah, that one bullet was jammed. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. All I'm doing is just ejecting them. Make sure the spring is good. This was empty when I started. I loaded 20 of them. No issues. I don't know what happened. Sliding it back on. The little lock clip. I broke it. It did sit right in there. From the look and feel of it, you actually don't need it, though. Let's try this one more time. And I don't know if you can see in there, but yes, that bullet turned. Yeah, they were not doing that before to me. Yep, he turned. So what's happening is as I'm sliding it down, the bullet's kind of turning this way or that way. And if you try to shove it down, well, it's got to be this way. I mean, it has to be. Fudge. Well... I'm not doing anything different than I did last time. So, this went from being a really cool idea to potentially a really dangerous one. Okay, well, now they're going in right. I'm just watching them as they go. <laughs> I'm looking down, whoop, looking down the hole. I'm trying to get it up closer to the top where you can actually see them a little better. 
so try not to let them all fall out. They're in there this time. Not sure what was happening, but let's try this again. I heard one pop out, which happened to me before. Uh, here I would lift that up, but I, I broke it. And they all load it, and then slide that last one in. It doesn't seem to like doing the last one. I think this is a hair short. So you got to have one more bullet than what your magazine will hold. Uh, damn. You just have to really pay attention. Make sure that they line up right. The first time I did it, they were perfect. I didn't even think. I was just throwing them in there, slapped it in. Oh, damn, that's cool. It works perfect. This time on camera, <laughs> as you saw, one of the bullets, you know, it's supposed to be like this, twisted around, and it was like this. So it might have been that way. I, I really wasn't sure. And when I pushed it down, it caused everything to kind of jam because it was in there wrong. As long as you pay attention, um, yeah, potentially an issue, but you really got to pay attention. I mean, even with that, having to pay attention is a whole lot better than feeding these in one at a time. You know, you've all been there. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but otherwise, um, it actually worked quite well. If you line up everything properly, and then until I, I broke this off, that kind of upsets me. Oh, it goes this way, I guess. I can probably glue that back in there. It just goes like that. Um, but as you saw, it actually fits quite well even without this. I might even reprint it again without it. I mean, all it's doing is just slides down here into this little groove. There we go. It just slides in. And then there's a little tab on the back that locks it in. Like that. It's not really needed. It just kind of helps hold it on there. And then you lift up on this and it'll slide out. You can see that little tab in there. There you go. It actually fits tight enough on the P-Mags. I have not tried it on the metal ones. I don't have one at the moment. All I have are, you know, 30 round P mags. I think they're called P30s, whatever the hell they're called. Hell, I don't even know. Um, but as far as the part, the print, the only real complaint I really had is these are just really sharp. I mean, they're sharp. Now, these edges here on the sides aren't. The top one, this one here, and the same thing on the other side. Those are sharp. And this is 35% infill. Trust me. <laughs> They're solid. <laughs> that little piece broke because, I mean, it was just a little tiny flange. I mean, you can see that there. You know, it was only a couple pieces because it's made to flex. That piece did break because, you know, there wasn't a lot there. Um, I only did supports up to here in Cura 4.71. Um, I just did supports up to here around, and then they just broke off pretty easily. Um, I know a lot of people have issues with supports. I don't know why. They're pretty simple, especially in Cura. Um, you just use the tree supports, and then in my case, I just blocked everything from this line up because it didn't need supports up there. It tried to support all these holes and all these. It, it didn't need it. Simplify 3D, I don't own it. I don't see a reason to pay $150 for a program that has literally one function I would like to have that Cura doesn't. It's not worth $150 to me. It just isn't. And yeah, I know it's a license, you know, two licenses, but you can only have it on one IP address. Um, apparently, if you, you know, try to share it with a friend or even a family member, they'll just shut both licenses off and you're out $150. I think that's stupid as shit. Fuck you. Don't care. Um, Cura, like I said, what the only thing it has that I like is separate processes. So I can have one process go to, let's say, level 50. 
and then I want it to do something, maybe a different temperature, maybe a different ship, maybe a different infill. That's what I want. Is it worth 150 bucks? Nope, not to me. Maybe you. You know, don't get me wrong. It's a nice program, but Cura does everything else for free except individual processes in the same print. That's the one thing that Simplify 3D has that's worth anything. Everything else, all the others do. But this isn't about that. This was about the the AR-15 speed loader. Um, as he said, it's a work in progress. <laughs> um, the only only thing is is making sure that they line up completely level, pointing the right direction, the way they're supposed to, and you won't have any issues, and it worked quite well for me. Um, as always, thank you.